hello, I am Alicia Blackwell Calvert, certified sommelier and wine enthusiast 40 under 40 recipient. I am so happy to be here with you today and share some of my thoughts on how to make your wine and cheese pairings for the holidays a success. A couple of tips I have for you off the bat is as you're choosing cheeses for your cheese boards for the holidays, there's a few things you should consider while choosing a cheese. Uh, consider the acidity of the cheese, any sweetness that might be involved, and the texture of your cheeses. And that will help you pinpoint what kind of wine would best fit your pairing. Um, there's components in your wine that you should consider as well that makes cheese and wine pair perfectly together. Uh, sweetness in your wine, tannin structure, and acidity are things you should consider as you're pairing your cheeses and wines together. And that will make a little more sense as we're going through our pairings today. The first pairing I have for you is the idea of pairing creamy cheeses and crisp wines together. Creamy cheeses are in the brie family, camembert, uh, cream cheese, cheese that are very mild and easy to spread on crackers and bread. My example for you today is a bloomy rind cheese. Bloomy rind just means that the rind of the cheese has been washed and it gets this gorgeous white color. The cheese itself is produced by Green Dirt Farms out of Weston, Missouri. This is their Ruby, uh, which is one of my favorite cheeses. It's buttery in texture and yogurt-like in flavor. So the cheese itself is very mild and creamy. The best way to pair this cheese is by pairing it with a crisp, bubbly wine. Wines like Cava, Prosecco, and Champagne are perfect for creamy cheeses because the bubbles in the wine cleanse your palate as you're going along from bite to bite. I would consider Day Wines Mamacita. This is produced from Vermentino, Malvasia, and Muscat grapes from Applegate, Oregon. Mamacita is a petalant natural. We call it pet nat for short. This is a naturally made wine. The bubbles are produced in each individual bottle, just like champagne and cava. The wine is very crisp, zesty, and aromatic. To me, it smells like rose petals, yellow apples, dandelions, and the acidity is very crisp and clean, like cava and prosecco are. The wine itself is really delicious with creamy, creamy cheeses and a great way to start your pairing and your first courses. The second option I have for you is choosing a high acid cheese with a high acid wine. The high acidity in both products will cancel out the perception of high acidity on your palate. Uh, cheeses like goat cheese, feta, are really high in acidity and seem very zesty and tangy on your palate. A great example of a zesty high acid cheese is Cy <laughs> Cypress Grove's Humboldt Fog. Humboldt Fog is from Arcata, California, and one of my favorite cheeses in the world. It's reminiscent of French Morbier. It has a nice, beautiful layer of vegetable ash through the middle, which is a signature for this cheese in particular. It wins many awards, um, including third place in the World Cheese Championship and gold in the World Cheese Awards. A really amazing cheese that is suitable for any holiday party. It's very tart and tangy, as I mentioned before. Uh, so a way to combat that is by pairing it with a Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc, or Chenin Blanc, wines that have very high acidity, so the perception um, seems balanced on your palate. My example for you is the 2018 vintage of Claude Riffaut's Le Bego. This is 100% Sauvignon Blanc coming from the Sancerre region of France. Sancerre is very bright on the palate. It tastes of green apples, white flowers, and river rocks. It's really tangy, and if you're a fan of Sauvignon Blanc, Sancerre is definitely a region to consider. And it's also a crowd pleaser as well. I love Sauvignon Blanc, one of my favorites. A third option I have for you 
is considering stinky, pungent cheeses. As you're walking through the cheese aisle, we often overlook cheeses that we don't know what they taste like, look kind of strange, and smell kind of funny. Don't be afraid of funky cheeses. They can be your friends, and they're also an interesting option on your cheese board for the holidays. An example of a stinky, aromatic cheese is Tulip Tree's Tiger Lily. This is very pungent. It smells of mushrooms, parsnips, uh, broth, very earthy and nutty cheese that as it comes up to temperature, it starts oozing and melting. Um, one way to enjoy a cheese like this is serving it with a spoon so your guests can really dig in and spread it on your cracker or your bread. Um, this cheese is best paired with a stinky, aromatic wine. My suggestion for you is pairing it with a Greek wine. My suggestion is Domaine Glenovo's Paleo Carisio. It's a fun wine from Zidza, Greece. Anyone who knows me knows I'm an advocate for Greek wines, and they should not be overlooked. The Paleo Carisio is a great foil to the aromatics of the tiger lily. It's, uh, the wine itself smells like mealy yellow apples and bruised peaches. It smells like dried flowers and rainier cherries. So there's a lot of interesting aromatics that might not seem to go together, but the wine itself is well balanced, really nice acidity, and has a little, um, a little uh, residual sugar. The residual sugar in the wine balances the sweetness of it. So don't think that it's too sweet. The aromatics of the wine itself is a great pairing for the aromatics of the cheese. So in all weird and weird go best together. <laughs> My next pairing for you this evening is pairing high um, fatty <laughs> aged cheeses with high tannin wines. One of the reasons that we pair ribeye steaks with bold wines is because chemically the fat in the steak adheres to the tannin of the wine. That's why young Cabernet Sauvignons from Napa taste softer with a steak is because of that chemical process. It happens with cheese as well. So definitely consider pairing cheeses like Manchego and Comte with wines that have a lot of tannin structure. Um, wines that have high tannin include Cabernet Sauvignon from Napa Valley, Sangiovese, Nebbiolo. Wines that are drying on your palate and seem tart are best paired with high fat cheeses. The reasons that a cheese like Manchego has a higher fat content is that as the cheese ages, the water evaporates from the cheese and leaves fat content behind. So today I have E. Trigal's 12 month aged Manchego cheese for you today. This is from La Mancha, Spain. This is a traditional region for Manchego cheese and it cannot come from any other area in the world. You know you're consuming Manchego because it has a distinct heron bone marking on the side. The 12, age, 12 month aged Manchego goes really well with Rioja. And another tip I have for you is pairing, um, pairing cheeses from a certain region with wines from the same region. So the Manchego is from Spain, pair it with a Spanish wine. Rioja is one of my personal favorites. It's made from Tempranillo, Graciano, and, uh, hello, uh, Garnacha, <laughs> indigenous grapes to the region. Today I have for you Marquez de Casares 2011 Gran Reserva Rioja, which can be found in uh, multiple locations in the US. It should be an easy one to find. The wine itself smells like plums, black cherries, and vanilla from long oak aging. It's definitely a crowd pleaser for you and your guests, so give it a consideration. My final pairing idea for you today is dessert. One of my favorite desserts is cheese. I can eat cheese all day long. Blue cheese is a great way to end your meal. 
One of my favorite blue cheeses is produced by Rogue Creamery. Rogue Creamery is based out of Central Point, Oregon. Their smoky blue is one of my favorites. It's a cheese that is very distinct. Rogue Creamery smokes their blue cheese with hazelnuts from local forests and um, the areas around the uh, creamery. So it's kind of, it's kind of like making wine, uh, using what you have around you to make a really amazing product. Smoky Blue has a very subtle pungency, and I think that's why it's great for dessert. Um, one way that I like to enjoy blue cheeses is by pairing it with sweet wines like Port, Sancerre, oh, sorry, uh, Sauterne, or late harvest wines from anywhere in the world. Today I have for you Quinta de Romaniera's Late Bottle Vintage Port. This is from the 2012 Vintage, and it's really delicious wine. If you're a fan of Tawny's or Ruby Ports, this is a great one to consider. Quinta de Romaniera is a fantastic producer that puts a lot of love in their wines. The port is coming from Douro Valley, Portugal, using indigenous grapes, Tinta Roiz, uh, Tariga Nacional, Tica Franca, um, and several other grapes to make the blend. Then it's aged in large barrels and bottled unfined and unfiltered. So it has a lot of flavor and don't be afraid of sediment at the bottom of the, bo uh, bottom of the bottle. It is completely natural for this wine. The port is not cloyingly sweet. This is why this is one of my favorites. It's a great uh, accompaniment to the subtle pungency of the blue cheese. They work very well together because the saltiness of the cheese and the sweetness of the wine are hand in hand, just like Chex Mix. Um, one of the things I like to do with my blue cheeses is drizzling in honey. Today I have poured Anya Corson's fermented organic jalapeno honey sauce on my blue cheese today. Um, sometimes blue cheeses are a little too pungent, a little too zesty. A great way to use it for dessert is by drizzling honey on it. Uh, the spiciness of the jalapenos, the saltiness of the cheese, and the sweetness of the wine are a really great way to finish a meal. All in all, a lot of cheeses and a lot of wines can fit into any of these categories that we talked about today. Uh, you can definitely serve one cheese for your guest or have an array of cheeses on your platter as a showcase. And don't be afraid to have several different types of wines for your guests to enjoy as they're going back and forth and um, socializing for the holidays. Another tip that I'm going to leave you with today is making sure that you're serving your cheeses at the proper temperature. Um, just like wine, we have a habit of serving our cheeses too cold. Before your guests arrive, I would pull my cheeses out of the refrigerator about 20 or 30 minutes prior so the cheeses have time to come up in temperature. That way you'll get the best flavor out of your cheeses. Thank you for having me today. I thank wine enthusiasts for including me in their 40 under 40 list. And I'm so happy again to um, be with you this afternoon. Oh, happy holidays, folks. Thank you so much. And cheers.